I'm Michael Bain and welcome to Triggered. Coming to you from the frozen tundra, honestly the frozen tundra, here at the secret hidden bunker in the Rocky Mountains and Dragon House Studios and brought to you as always by Midway USA. Just about everything for shooting, hunting in the outdoors, plus a lot of gear that you can wear if you're really, really cold when you're outside. Anyway, it's 2022. I have an odd thing to show you here, and I'm not totally sure I have a grasp of what I'm actually looking at. Just before the end of the year, I heard from Mike Register, Spike, who is the head of Spike's Tactical, the founder of Spike's Tactical down in Florida. Mike and I have been friends a long time. I have several of his guns from the early days. They've always been excellent. And he's like, hey, Bane, you ever heard of a biaxial reduction, a re recoil reduction system? Said, no, I've heard of a couple of bi-turbos in cars. But he goes, I'll tell you what, it's an interesting thing for you to look at. We'll build one up for you and send it to you so you can look at it and tell us what you think. So, okay, here is what we have. This is from Spites Tactical, but it utilizes a system from Aviation Arms that does away with the buffer tube, the recoil spring, and the buffer, moves everything up here to the top. So the recoil system is enclosed in this attachment at the top. And the reason for this is to make a shorter AR. It's not the first time people have experimented with that. In fact, it's kind of a given these days. This particular company, founded in mid-2020, I believe, didn't want to have anything that would carry a brace because, as you know, the concept of a pistol brace is still up in the air. We still don't have new regulations on it. So what they wanted to do is create a system that didn't require a buffer tube and didn't involve folding the buffer tube out of the way. So they re-engineered the recoil system. Now, this is not the first time I've seen a recoil system sitting on top of an AR-15. If you go back to the dawn of time, way back when this all started, Olympic Arms came out with the first AR-15 pistol, and I believe they had the recoil system sitting up on top of the pistol as well. I shot a couple of, uh, of Olympic Arms pistols, but wow, they were expensive. They were like 2X, 3X, just the cost of an AR. This was back in the back when. Now, following up on that, Rock River Arms, who has always had a reputation for building high-end guns, also has a piston-operated pistol, AR-15 platform pistol, with the recoil system, the pistol system, on top. Now I had one of those for about a year and shot it a lot and it was in fact a very impressive gun. It worked super well. So this guy has now floated into my arms and again I'm not totally sure what to think about it. Let me show you this. This thing here, uh, this kind of Rube, Rube Goldberg Bergish thing here, the idea appears as the gun cycles this thing comes back and apparently keeps it from smacking you in the face or any other additional problems from it. I have seen videos I haven't shot it yet. I, number one, there's a couple of reasons. I don't like to shoot guns I don't understand. Um, second reason is it's the tundra out there. So we're going to work on this. We're going to work with this system back here. And here obviously you can feel the spring up here. I did want to show you briefly a different implementation of a similar concept. And that, of course, is this guy. This is from uh, the, the uh, gun itself is a, a quarter circle 10, 9 millimeter AR. But this system here is from Deadfoot Arms. And it's maybe five years old, something like that. It also replaces the buffer and the buffer spring, buffer tube but it does so with a very short buffer tube and three separate spring systems. So basically you have what amounts to a very stubby buffer tube back here. So this is another way of trying to implement a similar system. This system has been around long enough to be tried and tested and it's very successful. As soon as the snow stops and the temperature rises above five degrees, 
we will take this guy to the range and I'll give you a full range report. We've got more when triggered returns. Welcome back to Triggered, and by the way, yes, SHOT is coming up in a couple of weeks. I am planning on attending. There's a lot of things I don't like. Number one, Nevada requires you to wear a worthless mask. We have no idea why that is. Number two, Nevada, especially the city of Las Vegas, is totally anti-Second Amendment. In fact, all the casinos, all the hotels ban carrying a concealed weapon on the premises or even storing one in your room, with one exception. You want to take a guess which one it is? Yeah, right, Trump. Trump supports the Second Amendment. They'll let you keep their, your gun in your room. They have no problem if you have a license carrying conceal on their premises. Everybody else pretty much sucks. So. I'm going in any case, and we'll try to round up for you what we're going to see for the rest of this year. While I was sorting through things over the holidays, when uh, it wasn't exactly as freezing as it is right now, at least it was above zero, I found this guy, and I couldn't remember if I ever took you through it or not. And if it has been, it's been back in the old days, SGO, Shooting Gallery Online. This is a Sheriff's Model 44 Special from U.S. Firearms, a single action, essentially a single action army clone. It is nothing short of a magnificent gun. I love the way it clicks, you know, like a Colt. You can always, you can always hear these happy clicks. The reason this gun is, to me, so fascinating, and the reason I've been offered gobs of money for this gun, is that it's, it's one of the last guns that came out of U.S. Firearms. U.S. Firearms was a fascinating company. You know, we spent some time there for the old TV show Cowboys, and essentially it was kind of a state-of-the-art firearms manufacturing company. It was all new equipment. Uh, wow, it was kind of like being in a hospital ward before COVID. Everything was super clean. All the workstations were new. All the CNC machines were state-of-the-art. And they were focused on producing single-action firearms. And they produced some of the finest ones ever. And I say that, having seen some original Colts, having handled a lot of single-action firearms, both from Colt, from America, from Italy. But USFA did an absolutely amazing job of building single action firearms. There was a catch. Here's the catch. And if you think about going to manufacturing, or you, no matter what it is, whatever widget it is, if you want to make a miracle skillet, you want to build a train, always comes out the same. If it costs you more to make than it, you can get selling it, you cannot make that up in volume. It doesn't matter how many you sell. And the problem with perfection, and I would say this gun is perfection. This gun is so much perfection, I don't ever shoot it. I think I've shot maybe six rounds through it. 44 Special, of course, one of the greatest calibers in the world. But it is just perfect. I believe the color case hardening is from Doug Turnbull, the great master. Bluing, flawless, perfect. Everything about this gun is just right. And unfortunately now, you've got to go to the secondary markets to find a USFA. For a while, when the company was going, just getting started up, you saw a lot of them in cowboy action shooting. But that's a really good way to use up a great gun. So now it tends to be a collector's market. So every so often, firearms companies go and firearms companies come. And then, oh, they go away again. But USFA did a spectacular job, absolutely amazing job. If you should stumble at a gun show into a display that says, U.S. Firearms, today, cheap, you might want to stop there. 
And speaking of gun companies that come, gun companies that go, got some interesting guns coming up over the next few weeks from Savage, including a pistol I think you're going to recognize. We'll be right back. This week's trigger is brought to you by Midway USA. Just about everything for shooting, hunting, and the outdoors. Volkorts and Firearms. Excellence is essential. Taurus USA. Prepare and protect. Rock Island Armory Arms Corps. Home of the STK 100. Welcome back to Triggered, where actually the heat in the studio here has warmed up enough where I can't see my breath. Almost. I wanted to first show you a book I'm going to be reading. I strongly recommend it. It's Mike Ochsner's Real World Gunfight, Gunfight and Training. And I've known Mike a long time. In fact, I killed Mike. Well, so did Rob Pincus and Michael Janich. We killed Mike running out of a bank. We killed him in ATM robberies. We killed him for shooting up a school. We even killed him during an assault and attempted rape in a hotel room. You got to know this is just a bad guy. But he's a good trainer, a great trainer. More importantly, he studies training. He studies how people learn. He studies the mental aspects of the way we learn to do physical actions, the way we learn to understand situations. And he has boiled that down into this book. I love so, just some of the titles of the chapters will give you a good idea of where we're going here. While we've been limited to using gun training methods that are guaranteed to cost too much, take too long, and deliver poor real-world performance. Ox has always been focused on real-world performance, not what looks good on the evaluation sheets, but what works in six or eight weeks after the training. So, I strongly recommend this book. I just started reading it. But he and I have been talking about this. I, I went through a couple of the original executive outlines and executive summaries for this book, talked to him about a lot of issues that would be in this book. So I'm excited about seeing how it plays out. You should grab this when you can. One other thing I wanted to say that you should grab, we've talked about the Mantis X system before. That's this little guy right here. What it does is it can tell you everything there is to know about your trigger pull. Basically, I keep it in a spare SIG 356 frame, keep this plugged into USB so it's always charged up, and I never figure out a way to lose it. But over the winter months, I have really, really, really worked with this, and it has been enormously helpful. Obviously, it sits into one of my 365s, and what it does is when I pull the trigger, chunk, it reads and tells me exactly how I pull the trigger. And that is reflected on my cell phone. It's got an app on there. It's got lots of exercises, lots of different training things. But for me, the single most important thing is that trigger pull. And over the winter, over the fall and early winter, I work with the Manus X a lot. And one of the things I found he said it works. It worked extremely well. So when I went to the range and started shooting rounds, I would say my trigger pull had improved by, call it 20%, 25%. It was consistent. And it was consistent because I've been working with this tool. So anyway, Manus X, is it expensive? Yeah. Does it work? Yeah. You can also get a setup for the AR-15. It's really one of the best I've ever seen. So. That's it for this week's guys. As always, brought to you by Midway USA. Just about everything for shooting, hunting, and the outdoors. Coming up over the next few months, obviously, we'll have SHOT Show reports for you, what we find there at the SHOT Show. I'm going to be in Texas with John Hearn, another great trainer. Carl Wren, good friend, great trainer. And my pal Mike Harvey at Cimarron Firearms. So look at some cowboy guns. So, until next week, Try very hard to stay warm, and I hope you have more success than we're having.